Chase. 460 is Leo Marshall with us. For those of you that don't know, Leo, Leo Marshall is the man at the moment. Okay. Um, as you see there, that's our king there. He's the co-founder of the Hidden Science Academy. Now, you know what, brothers and sisters? Jeez. You know what, brothers and sisters? I didn't know where to place him today because whew, this brother, this brother, I've got to say this to you openly to every single one. This brother here, his scientific breakdowns and the way he engineers the teachings unalike i'm going to say this publicly unalike and um what what, what else goes for him and I, I don't like him for it the man is too damn good looking too look at him with a little designer beard sure listen leon we love you king we want to hear your words brothers and sisters if you want to hear from brother leon put some ones into the chat room put some ones into the chat room and if you're part of the hidden science following crew let leon know what you what you think about him and his sister Vanika. All right, Baba Leon, I'm not going to hold you back any further, my king. Please drop the ballistics for us, king. All right, blessings, brother. Apologies blessings. for my lateness. I was on no, a very brother. Normally, I was thinking of putting you at that end, but I didn't know, you know, until I said I was thinking, where should I put it before? I didn't know what you wanted to do tonight. So I oh. dropped you at the beginning, but I, I got to say, so next time, brother, I'll drop you at the end as usual. No worries, brother. No worries. All right, so let me just share my screen. No worries, King. It's all yours. Bubba, as as Bubba Leon's, get, Leon's getting ready, tonight is about raising your vibrations, brothers and sisters. Yeah? Tonight is about raising vibrations. Leon, it's all yours. All right, brother. You can see my screen, yeah? It's clearly. Clearly. All right. So tonight is all about raising your vibration. And the people who follow me, you know that I come from a scientific perspective every time I do my presentations. Uh, they call me the scientist. If you want to follow me online, um, on Instagram at the scientist online. So if you want to follow me, that's at the scientist online. Now, as this presentation will focus heavily on the science of vibrations, it makes sense to start with a definition of science that is easy to understand. So here is my personal definition. Science is logic backed up by evidence. This is my personal definition of science. So when I say logic, I just mean common sense. And then you back up your common sense with proof. So if I was to ask you what's two plus two, I'm hoping that your logic, your common sense would say four. And then if I said, well, can you prove that? Well, the easiest way to prove it is to put two fingers on one hand and then two fingers on the other hand and then count them out loud and you get to four. Simple. Now, if you start using my definition of science, you'll start to realize that science is simple. And I like to keep things super simple when I'm teaching because a wise man once said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. That was arguably the greatest scientist of all time, Albert Einstein. So if he can keep it simple, why can't we? Now, I agree with this statement, but I'd take it one step further. I'd say if someone's teaching you science and they can't explain it simply, it means they don't understand the subject well enough or they do, they just don't want you to understand it. So they explain it to you in a confusing way, in a complex way, so you don't get it. It's either one of the two. So with me, anytime I'm teaching science, I like to keep things simple because science to me is just, is just two plus two. Or as another wise man once said, boom. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick maths. Quick maths, that's all we're gonna be dealing with today. Quick maths, so we're gonna keep it super simple. Now, let's get started. To understand vibrations, because we're talking about vibrational frequencies, you need to understand the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, the people that follow me, this will just be revision for you. You know about the electromagnetic spectrum, but the people that don't, all you need to know is these are all the vibrational frequencies in the known universe, known to man. Yeah, these are all the vibrational frequencies in a known universe from cosmic rays to gamma rays, X rays, ultraviolet rays, infrared, microwaves, radio, radar and radio and so on. And all you need to really know from this is you've got the cosmic rays, which are more high frequency vibrations. And then the lower frequencies are your radio waves. But look at that tiny section in the middle, very tiny section called the visible spectrum. That's what our naked eye can see as light. And look at the colors. 
red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. These are the vibrational frequencies that our eyes can see. Leon, but, yes. Leon, please forgive me, brother. And Adele tells me to, to not to do this. Um, I have to, brother and sister, if, if there's questions for brother Leon and his power arm breakdown, put it in the Q&A, not in the chat room, okay? Put your questions in the Q&A and I'll try to ask some of your questions to brother Leon. So I don't want to interrupt Leon again, but please put your Q&A, sorry, put questions in the Q&A, not in the chat, so that way we don't miss it. Thank you very much, Leon. No problem. So with the electromagnetic spectrum, we're looking at vibrational frequencies in the known universe. But look at that tiny section called the visible spectrum. That's what our naked eye can see as light. So this is what our eye can see when, it talk, when we're talking about vibrational frequencies. This is what our eye can see. Now, for some of you who, you know, back in science, they taught us this. And some of you may not remember this. You might have been sleeping in your science class like I was. <laughs> yeah. But this is how they teach electromagnetic spectrum. They teach it in like a straight line. But what's crazy about vibrational frequencies is they don't travel in a straight line. Now, I wonder if people can see me. They travel. This is just like a spring. They travel in like a spiral. This is how vibrational frequencies travel. Yeah, like a like a spiral. So it would actually make more sense teaching the electromagnetic spectrum like this, like circular motion. These are all the vibrational frequencies in the known universe. So all of the vibrational frequencies are shown on this spectrum. But again, look at the tiny section called visible. Those are the light, that the seven types of light that our eyes can see, the different frequencies that our eyes can see, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. They're like different angles of light, different aspects of light, different angles of light, yeah? And in mass, they call each angle, if you're talking about a circumference, each angle like an arc, like an arc angle. So these are different arc angles of light. And what's crazy is when sunlight when the light comes into the, our atmosphere, it gets refracted, it gets reflected, yeah? It changes the angles of the light. It changes the angles of these vibrational frequencies. Again, these are light frequencies, but they, they're on the electromagnetic spectrum. So they are vibrational frequencies. So our earth, our, our um, atmosphere changes the, the angles of light. But look at this, if our eyes can only see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, that's light. Then what about all of these other frequencies? Ultraviolet, infrared, microwave, radio wave, gamma rays. These are all aspects of light as well, but they're not color, they're black. They're black light. So when you look at, when we see a color in nature, we're looking at the visible spectrum. Look how much we don't see. Look how much we don't see in the known universe. And for those who want evidence of black light, all you need to do is go on Google and type in what is black light. It will tell you black light is ultraviolet or infrared radi radiation. In other words, invisible to the eye. So that's crazy. So the light that we can't see is black light. So when they say ultraviolet radiation is bad, understand what they're saying. Radiation, that's light. They're talking about black light, yeah? Now is black a color? Because if our visible eye, if uh, the, our naked eye can see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, seven, the seven angles, the different angles of light, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, seven. If our eyes can see those seven, and those are the colors in the known universe, or those are the vibrational frequencies, then what about these other colors? What about the things that we can't see? You now know that's black light but it's black a color. Now, for those of you who say, you know, oh, I don't see color. You might want to look away now because I'm about to talk about color. So when you see color in nature, whatever color you're seeing in nature is being reflected back to your eye. I repeat, when you see color in nature, I mean in nature, when you're looking at plants, trees, fruits, vegetables, any color you see, that is because that color is being reflected back to your eye. So for example, if you see an indigo surface, that's because that indigo surface is absorbing all of the visible light and reflecting indigo back to your eye. So indigo is not being absorbed by that surface. I hope that makes sense. What about green? If you're looking at green leaves, understand that 
the green that you're seeing is the light that's being reflected back to your eye. That green leaf is absorbing all of the other vibrational frequencies. In other words, all of the other types of light. So it's absorbing red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. It's reflecting green. It's not absorbing green, it's reflecting green. Yeah, that's green. So what about yellow? Again, if you see something yellow in nature, it's reflecting yellow. That means it's reflecting one of the seven angles of light. What about white? If you see something that's white in color, it's because it's not absorbing any of the angles of light. It's reflecting all of them back to your eye. And that's the reason why you see white. That's the reason why you can't look up at the sun for too long, because then you'll start to see white spots, because there's nothing to reflect the light. There's nothing to change the angles of the light. So what happens when you see black? When you see black in nature, a black surface, it's because that black surface is absorbing all of the vibrational frequencies of light. So is black a color? Black is the absorption of all colors. Black is the completion of, color, of colors. When you see something like red, that's incomplete. It's like singular. But when you see black, black is the absorption of all colors. Black is the absorption of the, all the different angles of light. This black surface. Now, what on earth is this black surface called? Melanin. Let's quickly talk about melanin. Now, instead of me telling you how great melanin is, I'm going to show you two scientists and show you what they said about melanin. This first one, his name is William Montagna. He wrote the book, The Structure and Function of Skin with his colleague, Paul F. Paracal. Listen to what he said about melanin. They say it's a powerful antioxidant, anti-aging chemical and protects the skin from damaging ultraviolet radiation. Remember when they say radiation, they're talking about light. It is a DNA repairer and photoreceptor photoreceptor. Again, when, when you're trying to understand science, you've got to break down the language. Photo means light. Receptor means receive. So melanin receives light. So melanin doesn't block light. I hear that all the time. Yeah, melanin blocks light. That's the reason why black people are low on vitamin D. Melanin doesn't block light. It's a photoreceptor. It receives light. It absorbs light. It can absorb photons, which is light, and convert them into electrons. It is induced by solar exposure and is dependent on the amino acid tyrosine. Now, some people, uh, people who follow the Hidden Science Academy, you know you've got to make notes when I do my presentations. So can someone make a note of that? It is dependent on the amino acid tyrosine. Melanin is dependent on the amino acid tyrosine. It is the primary determinant of hair and skin color in all humans. However, there are two types of hair and skin in melanin. So you can either have eumelanin or pheomelanin. Yes, that means everyone has melanin. It's either you're more eumelanin dominant or you're more pheomelanin dominant. Hmm. Eumelanin dominant or pheomelanin dominant. How would you know which one you have? Well, just look in the mirror. If you're more black and brown, you've got more eumelanin. If you've got blonde hair or red hair, blue eyes, and you're pale skinned, then you're more pheomelanin. But everyone has melanin. So the next question then would be, how can a eumelanin dominant individual or a pheomelanin dominant individual raise their vibrations? What sort of foods can they eat to raise their vibration? Well, let's go back to the colors. What colors should we be eating to raise our vibration? Now here's where I want a little participation. I'm looking at the chat. If, if black absorbs, if melanin absorbs all of the you know, the different angles of light, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, you know, the seven angles, then what colors should we be consuming? I see some people saying dark, some people saying dark, a lot of people saying all. Well, for balance, we need all of them. Remember, what causes black? Black is the absorption of all of them, all of them, all colors. So what should you have in your diet? All colors this is going to increase your vibrational frequency all colors yeah but what do you see when you go to the supermarket fruits and vegetables what sort of colors do you see when you go to the supermarket you see red orange and yellow you know and green foods you don't really see the 
the purples, the indigo, the violet foods. So we, if we're only consuming what we go to the supermarket and buy, we're going to be imbalanced. We're not going to be able to raise our vibrations because we're not consuming all of the frequencies. What do you see when you go to your supermarket? Do you see all of the colors? For example, do you see things like this? Do you know what this is? Does anyone know what this is? This is kale. Have you ever seen kale like that? Look how powerful that looks. Purple, look. This is what we need to be consuming. If we're consuming more of the red, orange, and yellow, and green, we're going to be off balance. We're not going to be able to raise our vibrations with the foods that we're eating because black absorbs all of the vibrations. Look, look at kale. We need to be absorbing and eating foods like this. And what's crazy is when we think of the seven colors, you know, the seven angles of light, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, it matches the pH scale. So people know about the pH scale because of Dr. Sebi. Dr. Sebi talked about the pH scale. He said that seven is neutral. Anything under seven is acidic. Anything over seven is alkaline. And Dr. Sebi is famous for saying that we need to be on an alkaline diet. And he says, avoid acids, avoid acids. However, look at the question there. Does acid mean bad? Does acid mean bad? Now, this is why I think science is so simple because you see these colors, these colors that you see on the pH scale, they literally match the colors of the fruits and vegetables that we should be eating. So if all acids are bad, what about your lemons and your limes and your grapefruits and all those citric acid fruits? Your citrus fruits, which are full of acid, they're Leon, on the acid Leon, side. Leon, easy yes, to rust the man. Boy, you, you, you <laughs> warned me to that, you're going to be letting off, brother, but ease up on them vibes, brother. You're getting illegal now. Listen, oh, I don't want to waste no time tonight, on, brother. brother. Trust me. I don't want to waste no time tonight. Look, look, if we're saying acids are bad, that means you're missing half of what you should be consuming. Your red foods, your orange, your oranges, your carrots, your lemons, your limes. This is part of the pH scale. When they, when they, This is what you need to understand about acids. Acids in nature... Which it's not all acids are bad because certain acids in nature are going to be good for you. Your lemons, your limes, your grapefruits, they are amazing for your health. And check out the alkaline. Look what color they are. Your blue, your purples, your dark colors. That's why we need some more foods like this to raise our vibrations, to balance us out. Because we need both sides. Come on. We need the acid and the alkaline. We Dude. need to be balanced. That's what creates blackness the absorption of all of this, yeah? I'm gonna introduce you to a nutrient that you may not have heard of, and it's on the alkaline side because it's very dark. And you get this nutrient from dark berries and dark fruits. So the purple, the blue, the indigo, the violet, that side of this equation, the alkaline side. Here's the nutrient, it's called resveratrol. Resveratrol, has anyone heard of resveratrol? Now, let me give you some benefits of resveratrol. Now, all you need to know about resveratrol is it's plant-based tyrosine. Resveratrol is plant-based tyrosine. And what is tyrosine? That's the amino acid that melanin relies on. That's the amino acid that melanin relies on. So here are four benefits of resveratrol. It's anti-tumor, it's got anti-tumor, anti-cancer properties. Wow. It is anti-inflammatory, antiviral, hint, hint, wink, wink, antibacterial, it's literally anti-everything, yeah? Helps to lower blood pressure naturally. No one's heard of this, right? Protects the brain from cognitive decline, like, wow, where, where can we get this resveratrol? Well, again, just science is simple, just do some research. Type in what is, res, uh, what is resver resveratrol found in? It will tell you that it's found in grapes. It doesn't tell you that it's, it's supposed to be dark grapes though. That should be dark purple grapes, black grapes. It says it's found in wine. How come it's found in wine? Well, wine is made from grapes. It's found in grape juice and berries, all the different types of berries, blueberry, bilberries, cranberries. You're getting these things from grapes, the darker grapes, yeah? Resveratrol is found in the skin of these things. So the skin of these dark fruits is going to raise the vibration of your skin, your melanin. 
All right, last scientist who's going to talk about melanin for us. This guy's name is Dr. Arturo Solis Herrera, a medical surgeon. And he says, melanin is to the animal kingdom what chlorophyll is to the plant kingdom. He called melanin a super chlorophyll due to its many advantages over regular chlorophyll. He says it exists in many tissues beside the skin, is present in a developing fetus. And he said there are many types of melanin. So there's not just two, there are many types of melanin. And he actually wrote a book about it called The Human Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. For the people that don't know what photosynthesis is, that's what green leaves do due to chlorophyll. Green leaves absorb sunlight and in the presence of carbon dioxide and water, they create a process called photosynthesis to create glucose and oxygen. In other words, sugars and oxygen. That is the process of photosynthesis. Again, if you weren't sleeping in your science class, you'd remember what photosynthesis is. That's how the, the plants live. This is how the plants breathe. They absorb sunlight through chlorophyll and then convert that into glucose and oxygen. And what that person, what that doctor saying is that's what mel melanin can do that he called melanin the human photosynthesis but if melanin can do photosynthesis that would make black people plants are black people plants no <laughs> no black people are not plants however we do bear some similarities to plants don't we hmm we do Leon, some... stop it, man. Chat. Don't we? Shit. Jeez. Come on, buddy. All right. So just to sum up what melanin is, its chemical structure allows no energy to escape. It's the perfect absorber of light and all energy frequencies, vibrational frequencies. Melanin is abundantly present in the, in the inception of life. There is a melanin sheath covering both sperm and egg. Is found in almost every organ of the body. It converts light energy to sound and back again to light energy. Melanin responds to and absorbs light, sound in the form of music and electrical energy and uses this energy in the form in the body for food and nutrition. Now science to me is simple. It's, you can literally observe yourself with this. I know when I'm out in the sun, when I go back to Jamaica, my dad lives in Jamaica, when I go stay with my dad and I'm out there in the blazing hot sun, you know, I don't really think too much about food. It's only when I go inside, I'm like, right, what shall I eat? But when I'm out in the sun, it's like I'm being charged up by the sun. It's like those vibrational frequencies, the sun is raising my vibrations. I don't really think about food. Hmm. And just to reiterate, these different angles of light, Melanin absorbs all of these different angles of light. That's what melanin does. It absorbs all of the angles. And remember, there's seven angles, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, the seven angles of light. And they all appear in the visible spectrum, which is tiny compared to the whole spectrum. So think about what we're absorbing that we can't see. But the visible spectrum is what we can see. And when we think of these red, these colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and indigo violet these seven colors that represent the visible spectrum those seven colors are not only associated with the visible spectrum then you now know they're associated with the ph scale they're associated with all the colors we see in nature the fruits the vegetables the trees the herbs they're, they're associated with that they're associated these seven colors these seven vibrational frequencies, they're associated with, you know, chakras. And again, when you're looking at a vibrational frequency, when they show it to you, they kind of show it to you like this, when really it's more of a spiral, it's more of a circular motion. But think about these seven colors. That's what's associated with your chakras. So when we talk about raising our vibrational frequencies, we're raising our vibrational frequencies. We have to be talking about melanin absorbing more light. This is the science behind raising your vibrational frequency. This is not my opinion. 
melanin absorbing those seven angles of light, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now, to understand science, you need to understand the language. Every time you hear the word radiation, understand they're talking about light. Radiation equals light. So when they say, oh, ultraviolet radiation, they're talking about light. Radiation is synonymous with light. But what is, what is light synonymous with? Well, in most religions, in most spiritual practices, light is synonymous with knowledge. Light is synonymous with knowledge. In most religions, in most spiritual practices, light is synonymous with divinity. Wait a minute. In most religions, light is synonymous with God or Ra. Hmm. I wonder if, I wonder if anyone's putting two and two together right now. So light is synonymous with God and melanin can absorb all the different seven angles, you know, the different seven angles of light. In other words, the, the seven parts of the vibration of the visible spectrum, melanin can absorb all seven angles of light. God, wait a minute. The seven arc angles of light, God, the seven arc angles of God. The seven, yeah, the seven arc angles, the seven arc angels, I mean, angles, I mean, angels, I mean, angles, the seven arc. <laughs> oh, Easy, Rusterman. <laughs> Wait a minute. If melanin can absorb the seven archangels, I mean angles, of light, and that's what makes it complete. If melanin, if this is true, Brother Andrew, if all of this is true. Yes. Who are you really? Come on, King. Black man. Come on. Black woman. Come on. Who are you? Come on. Oh, my. Science is simple. It's just that you've been taught it in a confusing way. And there's only one of two reasons why. Either the person teaching you science doesn't understand the subject well enough. Or they do. They just don't want you to understand it. Jeez. I'm going to let you put two and two together on that one. <laughs> my name's Leon Marshall, and that concludes the end of my presentation. Oh, come on, brothers and sisters. Come on, brothers and sisters. I told you, I told you, heavyweight tonight. Heavyweight teachings tonight, Leon. Jeez. Oh, boy, Thank Leon. You. I don't know, brother. Never cease. Never cease, brother. I've got Elena Matthias says, I absolutely love this subject. I'm an undergraduate photographer student at South Bank University. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Leon, I'm going to ask you one or two quick questions. 30 seconds each question, okay, King? Camilla yes, Parker's yes. asked the question, can vibrations be felt through hearing? Yes, indeed. Absolutely. So when you look at the visible spectrum, well, when you look at the whole spectrum, the, um, the electromagnetic spectrum, everything on the spectrum is light and vibrational frequencies. Now, anytime anything vibrates, it makes a sound, whether it's audible or not. So when we're looking at the, the, the spectrum, you're not just looking at light, you're looking at sound as well. So think about that. Those, those visible spectrums, each one of them makes a sound, whether we can hear it or not. So you can absorb vibrations through light. You can absorb vibrations through sound. Man. Brilliant. You've yes, asked it, King. You've asked it. Jenny um, Lascaris, I think it is. How does it work for someone who is colorblind? Does this affect their vibrational frequency? 
Uh, I'm not sure, but as long as light, remember, it's your melanin that absorbs light. Mm. So as long as you've got melanin, remember melanin, as I've just shown, melanin is not just um, your skin, melanin's in your organs, you've got melanin in your brain, you've got melanin everywhere. So as long as your melanin is absorbing light, then yeah, you'll be able to absorb the seven angles, angels, seven <laughs> angles of light. Stop it, yeah. man. Stop now, it. Stop when it comes to the eye, your eye has a lot of melanin. Yeah, so the darker your eye, the more melanin it has in it. Now, sunlight should go through your eye, but I don't know, if you're blind, maybe you don't have as much sunlight going into your eye, but that shouldn't affect you as long as you've got, obviously, melanin in everywhere else. Praise God, big brother. Kaz Ryder says, um, hi, brother. How can we get Leon slides that he's using today? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just the best. I tell you what, follow the Hidden Science Academy. We've got quite a few events coming up. Hopefully, brother will let me uh, um, talk about the events near the end or whatever. Absolutely, King. Yeah, and then um, um, you come onto the platform, um, follow our events, and I'll send me a message, and I'll, I'll try and get them to you. Absolutely, I'll I mean, try because I know once I say that, every I'll have I know, of I know, brother. Put yourself into it, King. Two more questions before we move on. I find my, Keelon Ross says, I find myself burping a lot, even on a plant-based diet. I eased off the breads and the wheat. I do not eat nuts and vegan crisps. I do, sorry, I do eat nuts and vegan crisps at night when chilling. Any advice, please? What was the question, sorry? I find myself burping a lot, even on a plant-based diet. Um, but they've eased off bread and wheat, but they do eat nuts and vegan crisps at night when chilling. Any advice? Okay, so if you go back to the acid alkaline um, image that I showed, so seven is neutral, seven is your green foods. Yeah, so you want to consume a lot of green foods. But you see under seven, those are the lighter colors. Those are your red, orange, yellow, yeah? And again, that's the acid side. Sometimes when the, we don't have enough acid in our stomach, it throws food back up because it can't digest it. Sometimes if we don't have enough acid in our stomach, it throws food back up. You might start getting you know, the acid reflux or whatever, because we need to understand that acids help to break down foods. So you need acid in your stomach. You can increase the acid in your stomach by consuming the acid you know, the acid foods, the citric acid foods like lemons, limes, and that sort of stuff. Not, not man-made acids. Yes. Okay, Bob, a last question. Um, there are many, there are more questions, but because of time, last question is, um, what is the name of the author of the book, The Human Photosynthesis? Dr. Arturo Solis Herrera. All right, and maybe if you can type that down for them in the chat room after. Yeah. All right, brothers and sisters, that's Brother Leon. If you come back at the ending to give us some breakdowns in terms of what's going to be coming up in the near future, man, it's going to be blockbusting. We've been on the phone on a daily basis. We've got some great events lined up after. So that's going to be at the end, okay, brothers and sisters? Thank you, brother. We've got 500 people on the platform now.